Today we have the pleasure to have uh, Marcelo Sales, uh, coming from Sales, uh, coming from Emory. Um, he will be talking about a PCR type problem. So uh, it's all yours. Okay, thanks. Uh, you guys can listen to me, right? Because I hope that they can listen to me. Uh, so yeah, I'm talking about the title is uh, PCR type problems, but I kind of don't like a little bit the title because it's kind of enigmatic, right? So if you don't know who is PCR and what type of problem he formulated, right? Maybe it's not so clear what we are talking about. So I created a subtitle, right? I, maybe we are talking about Ramsey against Ramsey statements against density statements, right? And so let me make a little bit more clear, right? I will start slow, right? I think that most of you are used to. So I start with what is a Ramsey statement, right? So maybe we'll start with the most basic, uh, basic problem, right? So if you give me graphs G and H, and an integer r, I will say that g arrows h with r colors, right? If whenever you color the edges of g using the r colors, right? No matter how you color, you obtain a monochromatic copy of h, okay? And the basic theorem, right? The fundamental theorem in the area, right? It's the Ramsey theorem, right? That says that for every H and in integer R, there exists a capital N, right? The I can run, say, right? I can narrow KN, the complete graph on N vertices, and by complete graph, I mean you connect everybody, right? With R color. So whenever I color the edges of the complete graph on N vertices, capital N vertices, I will obtain a monochromatic copy of H. Okay? So, I assume that you guys are familiar with that, right? But uh, I want to give an example, right? Because why not, right? So here, the example that I want to give, right? It's a very classical example, right? That if you have six vertices, right? And you color with two colors, you obtain a monochromatic triangle, right? And well, we know how it goes, right? You fix a vertex. Maybe the vertex that we want to fix is this vertex, right? And while we are coloring with two colors, let's say, let's say red or blue, right? So we have five possible neighbors, right? Well, by pigeonhole principle, one of the colors has to appear at least three times. So let's say that is blue. So blue appears here three times. But then now we get some sort of issue, right? Because if any of these edges here are blue, right? we construct a monochromatic triangle. So all of them have to be red, but they all, all of them are red. We have anyway a monochromatic triangle, but in the opposite color, right? So no matter how you color, you obtain uh, the triangle. So this is a Ramsey statement, right? You have a structure that you want to find and you say, ah, if I have a large structure, no matter how I color, I find uh, this structure, right? Is it clear? Hope so. Uh, so, again, another example, right? I like to give examples, right? So, uh, arithmetic progression that I will call for short as APK, APK, so arithmetic progression on K, is a sequence of integers, right, that you separate each one by a factor, right, by a ratio of D, right? So B A, A plus D, A plus two D, and so on, right? You have K elements, and that's why it's called arithmetic progression on length K, right? And I can do the same sort of game that here, right? Instead of trying to find a monochromatic triangles or monochromatic graphs, right? I can color the integers and ask, can I find a monochromatic arithmetic progression, right? So, here I create some piece of notation, right? I say, oh, if you take a subset of integers x, right? And you have these integers r and k, r stands for the colors and k for the size of the arithmetic progression, right? 
then x arrows apk with our colors, right? This will mean to me that no matter how I our color x, no matter how I color is our colors, there will be a monochromatic arithmetic progression on length k. That's what it means, this sentence. And here we have the famous, also famous result by Van der Waarden, right? That says that if you color the integers with our colors, and no matter what is uh, the number of colors and the size of the arithmetic progression, if you color with our colors, you can find a monochromatic arithmetic progression of length k. Again, another example, right? We have nine uh, elements, and I'm not going to prove that, but no matter how I color these nine elements, for instance, if I color like this, uh, I'm coloring at random, right? You're going to find the arithmetic progression. And here we find, right? It will be this guy, this guy, and this guy. But I'm not going to prove that. It requires it's a more involved proof, right? So, but it's a fact, right? If you have the first nine integers and you color with two colors, no matter how, you're going to find the arithmetic progression of length three, okay? So I think that this is enough for us. What I think that it gives uh, some sense of what is a Ramsey statement, right? So you want a property, you color with some colors, a larger structure, and you obtain a monochromatic, uh, your monochromatic substructure, right, that you start with. Now I want to talk about the other thing, right? The density, right? So what is a density statement, right? So Let's try to maintain the uh, same examples, right? But now we look in in the sense of density, right? So we were talking about finding monochromatic copies of graphs, right? So now we are going to do that, not with colors, but with the context of density, right? So given two graphs, given two graphs, A, sorry, in a real number alpha, I will say that G arrows H with this alpha, right? Alpha arrows. If whenever you take an alpha proportion of the edges, I have a copy of H. So here you have a density result. Instead of coloring, I say, no, I think I, I take a specific density. And whenever I take this specific density, I will find a copy of H. And maybe the classical result uh, the extremal graph theory, right? Is Mantel's result, right? That basically says that if I take a one half plus epsilon for epsilon very small, right? You can take any epsilon, right? If you take one half plus epsilon uh, for large uh, complete graph, no matter how I take one half plus epsilon, I'm going to find a triangle. Okay. And actually, I put a here a stronger statement, right? Uh, actually, the extremal number is n square over four, right? But so we don't need the epsilon, actually, right? You can do, we can be stronger here, but I will put the epsilon because it's in the context of the density that we are talking about. And this is sharp, right? Because you can take uh, the complete bipartite graph that is balanced, right? And this has exactly one half of the edges, right? So one half of proportion, and it doesn't have a triangle. So you can never get better than one half. Okay. And just uh, to be complete, right? The, oh, uh, the, the, the most complete form of the theorem is due to Turan for uh, complete graphs in Erdogan Simonovitz for general H, right? That just said that you can have a similar result, but here you, instead of taking one half plus epsilon, right? You take gamma plus epsilon, where gamma is a function of the chromatic number, okay? So this would be the similar density statement for graphs, right? What about arithmetic progressions, right? So 
for arithmetic progressions, right? We we are interested, right? It's the same game, right? We have x, a subset of integers, but now we are interested instead of coloring x, right? We are interested in taking a alpha proportion of the set x, right? You take a subset of size alpha times the cardinality of x, right? And here, uh, the main theorem, right, is this uh, Zemered theorem that basically says that if you take the set of integers, right, you can take alpha as small as you want. So there is a little bit, so, so let me say with more words, right? So for every alpha and k, there is going to exist a n0 that whenever you take n bigger than this n0, any alpha proportion of uh, brackets n, and by brackets n, I mean, right, brackets n just means the integers from 1 to n, if I didn't say before, but any alpha proportion, so any set of size alpha n here will contain arithmetic progression of length k. This is a very celebrated result, very famous. The proof is not so, so it's a little bit more complicated than Van der Waarden, right? A very nice result. But the funny thing here is that different than the other result, in the other result, we couldn't take alpha better than half, right? Because we had a counterexample. But here we can take alpha as small as we want. We really can take alpha as 0 0.0000001. And there will be a large n that works. Uh, this gives us some interesting remark that, of course, we 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 is we we, we thought before, maybe that Zemeredi theorem, right, actually proves Van der Waarden theorem. So if you have if you know Zemeredi, you can prove Van der Waarden. And how do we prove, right? Uh, first, we take alpha to be one over r. We can take it because we can take alpha as small as we want. By Zemeredi theorem. We know that there exists a capital N such that if you take any alpha proportion of N, you have arithmetic progression of length K, okay? But now, well, we are taking a coloring of the integers, right? Of the natural numbers, right? In particular, coloring of the natural numbers is a coloring of brackets N, okay? So, I can write this coloring as a partition, right? Where A1 is the uh, integers of color one, A2 is the integers of color two, and AR is the integers of color R. And one of the sets by pigeonhole or average, or uh, we, we need to have a proportion of one over R of the in entire thing. But then, yeah, because we choose alpha to be one over R, we were able to do that, right? Then this set AI that has size alpha n will contain arithmetic progression. Is it clear? Yes. Yeah. So uh, yeah. So the whole point is that is the Zemeredi proves von der Waarden, which kind of makes sense because it's if you are familiar, it's kind of a more sophisticated proof, right? But what about the opposite, right? Could we prove Zemeredi using von der Waarden, right? And that's kind of uh, the topic of today. That's kind of what I want to talk, right? So now let me explain why all these problems are called PVA type of problems, right? This is due to the following problem uh, given by PVA, okay? So the problem is the following. Uh, I give a set of integers x, and I say that this set of integers that doesn't need to be finite, it's an infinite set of integers, right? I say that it's free, right? If no matter, uh, there is no sums that are equal to each other, right? So no matter if I take a subset of integer uh, indices j and j prime, from the set of indices i, 
if I sum here in the left side and I sum in the right side, the sum is going to be different, right? One example of a free set um, could be the numbers on base two, right? So maybe one, two, four, eight. No matter how we arrange, the sums will never be equal, right? It's unique, right? And this PCA I asked in, a, in the context of, he was working with some seed on sets in harmonic analysis, very different, but he somehow made a combinatorial statement that was interesting for him. And the combinatorial statement is the following, right? So are these two statements that I'm going to say here equivalent for X set of integers, right? Set of natural numbers, right? So the first statement is that no matter how I color, right? The set X, right? I'm going to obtain one of the colors is not going to be free. And that's what I mean by this. I kind of got a little bit lazy here, but X arrow not free with our colors means that no matter how I color X with our colors, I'm going to obtain one of the colors, one of the, of the partition classes is not going to be free. Okay, so it's going to have some sum that will be equal instead of different. And this is a Ramsey statement, right? No matter how I color. And the second statement is that uh, if I give any alpha, right, there exists some y subset of x finite that whenever I take an alpha proportion of y, I obtain a not free set. Okay. That it might, it might look a little bit uh, artificial at the moment, right? Because, but he asked this question. And that's exactly a similar flavor of what we were talking when we are, uh, we are saying about the uh, Zemered in Van der Waarde, right? So we have both the Ramsey and the density statement. And clearly the density statement implies the Ramsey is the same proof that we, we, we saw before. But yeah, he asked if the statements are equivalent. Okay. So. Uh, can, I, can I ask you something? Uh, sure. What, what is the reason why you take a subset of Y here? I mean, in, in the current form, I don't know whether two implies one because Y could be any oh yeah it implies but implies. yeah but yeah but because uh, you are going to color x but y is a subset of x so it's going to be I a color see. okay all right um yeah uh, that's the way that he formulated right uh, he formulated <laughs> like that uh, he actually actually i'm lying a little bit he formulated the negation of this both uh, of the sentences the way that he formulates is with the negation of both, right? But it's the same, right? But I wanted to say run in density, so I put in this way. Uh, so yeah, like I said, uh, density will imply the Ramsey, but the converse is an open problem. It's a famous, mm, some famous open problem in some sense, but we don't, we were not able to, to, to solve it, right? So that's not the goal of today. But we will study some variants of this, right? And here I kind of say what will be the variants that we are going to discuss today, right? Hopefully. So we are going to study some variants from subsystems of linear equations, for independent sets on hypergraphs, and from some Euclidean configurations. That will be the goal of today, of what I want to show that we've done in the past, right? Uh, I forgot to say important thing. Uh, all that I'm going to show is a joint work with Vojta Rodo and Yarik Neshetriu. Okay, it's, it's good to say that the people right there <laughs> help me. Uh, so let's start with systems of linear equations, right? So let's start with the arithmetic progressions that we've been talking so much, right? So in the arithmetic progression. 
So if you try to kind of mimic whatever was the question of PVA, right? We have the Ramsey statement, right? So the Ramsey statement would be uh, for every number of colors, right? So we want to know for subterm X subset of integers if these two statements are equivalent, right? So the first is that for every number of colors, no matter how a color, I obtain an arithmetic progression. And the second statement is for every alpha, if there exists y finite, such that no matter how I take alpha proportion of y, I obtain arithmetic progression of length k. Notice that these statements are both true, right? So they both hold when x is equal to n, right? Because when x is equal to the integers, this is the first statement is exactly von der Waarden theorem. The second statement is exactly Zemeredi theorem, right? So they kind of, they both hold. Uh, if yes, right? If I can show that these statements are equivalent for every x, right? Then we will have something funny, right? Uh, shouldn't be true, right? We will have a way to prove Zemeredi theorem only using von der Waarden. And that seems sketchy, right? Because Zemeredi uses much more complicated techniques, right? So you shouldn't be able to do it, right? Because of that, Erdos, Nashatriu, and Rodo, they conjectured that the answer should be no, that these guys shouldn't be equivalent. And turns out that is no, right? So this is. Uh, the first result. So we are able to prove uh, that for every k, right, uh, greater or equal to three, because arithmetic progressions less than three are not interested, in any alpha that is between zero and k minus one over k, so large uh, uh, proportion, actually, that there exists a set x right? The Ramses satisfies the Ramses statement for any number of colors. If you color X with R colors, you are going to find arithmetic progression. But for every Y, right? Finite. There is going to exist a set Z that is really dense. It's really big. The alpha proportion of Y and Z doesn't have arithmetic progression. So I mean, that's what I mean. Why doesn't alpha arrows write arithmetic progression? There exists a, a set Z that is large that doesn't contain arithmetic progression. OK? So this will be the negation of the density statement. So they are not equivalent. I can find a X, the Ramses, but doesn't satisfy the density statement. So somehow Ramsey is weaker. Well, Ramsey, Ramsey arithmetic progressions is weaker than actually finding density. They are not the same concept, right? Which I think that is it's cool. It's somehow cool, right? It's something, it's kind of, it's not the proof, proof, but it's kind of some strong, yeah, it's kind of a proof that they are, the theorems are not equivalent. They are not equivalent. Really, the Meredi theorem is harder than the Van der Waarden theorem. Uh, and this alpha is optimal, right? Because uh, whenever you have something that runs this, right? It means that you have arithmetic progression, right? So, yeah, if you if you are able to run, it means that your x has arithmetic progression. So I could take this y as the arithmetic progression, right? So y will have size k. So if I take y as uh, apk, it means that if I take a proportion that is bigger than k minus one over k, I'm taking the entire set, so I cannot take something that is apk three, right? Because so. That will be, uh, yeah, so alpha, the best that you can hope is k minus one over k. 
for this type of statement. Any questions about that? Um, are there any hidden um, dependencies like um, you're thinking X as an infinite set and Y grows to infinity? The X is an infinite set. Yeah. So, and does, yeah, does I y didn't grow? say that, but X is an in infinite set. It mm -hmm. has to be because I, I need X to satisfy for every number of colors, right? Mm -hmm. And why? No. Any Y finite, this holds. Okay. Any Y finite. You want Y to be big, though, to be a yeah, little yeah, bit yeah. interesting, right? So the Ys that are small, they only help us. So, yeah. So this is the first result that I want to say. We did another system of linear equations. The is the BH sets. We are also able to say something about BH sets. So what is a BH set? I will give my definition of BH sets. <laughs> it's a little bit uh, maybe. Yeah, you can ask, you can say if you, if you want the integers to be distinct or not, right? For me, they will be distinct in some sense. Uh, so a BH set is basically a set that doesn't have, right? X, set of integers X is a BH set. If you cannot find uh, all the H sums, right? All the sums of length eight, H that you can find in, in, in a subset, they will be distinct, distinct, right? So whenever you take subset of indices of size h, when you sum, when you make the sum, right, the h y sum, they are not going to be the same element. Okay. Uh, and for true sets, this has a different name. That is a seed on sets. Okay. And uh, you can ask the same question, right? So I will be a little bit more briefly here because it's the same question. So you can ask uh, for some X, right? Is this two statements equivalent? Uh, the first statement is a, a color is our colors. And no matter how a color is our colors, I find a set that is not BH set, right? That, which means that there are two collections of H elements that the sum are equal, right? I will find a set. So it's runs in this sense, right? There will be a monochromatic solution when you have equality here of this system, right? But I also can ask uh, about the density, right? The density will be, you take an alpha proportion and there exists a Y, right, finite, that no matter how I take the alpha proportion of Y uh, contains a solution of the system, right? Okay. And the answer again, we basically I, I will sp I will, I will spoil spoil you guys. The basically we become masters of no. So the answer is no. They are not equivalent. This uh, uh this was asked by Alan and Erdos. They were interested if BH sets are satisfied that. And together with Nash and Trio, uh, Voigt and I, we were able to show that no. So here, uh, for every H greater or equal to two, uh, there exists an alpha, and unfortunately, this alpha is a little bit uglier than in the other case. In the other case, I said to you that you can take any alpha between zero and k minus one over k, right? Here, there exists an alpha, and this alpha is a function of h. It's not a nice function of h. Such that, uh, such uh, as there exists an alpha in a set x, right? That is infinite. Such that no matter how I color x, I'm going to find two sums of size h that are equal the solution of that system, right? But for every Y finite, I can find a large set Z of size at least alpha Y that is a BH set, doesn't contain a solution of that statement. Okay, that's it. 
So these are two results that we had. I think that they are nice. But then let's, like I said, we don't need to talk about system of linear equations, right? We can ask this question, uh, is Ramsey and density the same thing, right? For other parameters, right? And we did for independent sets on hypergraphs in some sense. So let me let me say what does that mean, right? So I kind of I want to say that the chromatic number, right? You can see as a Ramsey statement, right? The chromatic number is a Ramsey statement on coloring vertices, right? It, it basically means that if you color same that some graph has chromatic number uh, R, right? Uh, means that no matter how you color, right? With R colors, you have a proper color, right? So you will mean that, uh, so maybe I made a mistake here. Oh, let me see. Uh, 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 I want to say that you are going to have a chromatic number bigger than R, right? So maybe I want to say that you 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 want to have a chromatic number bigger than R. Whenever you color the vertices with our color, right? No matter how you color the vertices, you have a monochromatic edge. And by a monochromatic edge, I mean two vertices, a edge where the endpoints have the same color. So it will be the minimum R that's such that this uh, Ramsey statement doesn't hold, right? So the, there exists R coloring with no monochromatic edge, right? There exists R coloring that everybody's an independent set. And then you can use this idea, right, to build the statements for the PVA problem, right? What would be the, uh, so for a graph G, right, infinite graph, so infinite, I can ask the Ramsey statement, and the Ramsey statement is that if I color with uh, our colors, I'm going to find an edge. There, there, there won't be a proper coloring, right? So the chromatic number is infinite. But the density statement here would be the, I give a, a alpha proportion, right? Right, you give me alpha. And I say that there exists Y subset of vertices that find it that no matter uh, how I take a alpha proportion, there is no independent set of size alpha times y. Basically, that's what I'm saying here. There is no independent set of size alpha times y. Whenever I take an alpha proportion of y, I'm going to find an edge. Okay. Does it make sense? It's kind of uh, maybe a little bit uh, convoluted, right, way to say. The, the 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 result will be a little bit less convoluted, right? But yeah, the density here, if we follow whatever PVA says to us that is density, right? Will be that. I give a alpha, then there exists a y finite that whenever I take a alpha proportion of y, I find an edge. So there is no independent set that is large. So it's the same, same that a graph has large chromatic number is the same as saying that there is no large independent sets. That would be the question, right? And the answer, again, is no, right? We actually proved something slightly stronger that I'm going to state like that, I'm going to say the slightly stronger statement because maybe if I have time to show some proof, I might want to use that. Uh, so we we create this uh, we consider this weight function right and we say that it's stochastical if the sum of the is equal to one right and what we are able to prove right is that the if you take alpha that goes from k minus one over k 
to zero, right? There exists a graph G that indeed is Ramsey, right? But we can find large independent sets, but we can find even better than large independent sets, right? We can find like weighted, large weighted independent sets. So that means that whenever you give me Y finite and you give me a weight function for Y, I can find an independent set that has at least this weight alpha, right? So it's a little bit stronger because you don't need to give the same weight for every element, right? You can give different weights, but no matter how you give the weights, I can find an independent set that is at least alpha, okay? And the alpha is optimal in the sense, I will go back, that I claim that is at most k minus one over k, and it's, it's optimal. This is optimal in the sense, but I won't talk a lot about that. And exactly like I said, if I take the weights to be exactly one over y, every, every vertex has the same weight, right? You can translate the statement to the fact that there exists an independent set of size at least alpha y. That will be, uh, if you want to look one more time, I just think that the weights are at least alpha, but if you make everybody has weight exactly one over y, it means that I find the independent set of size z that is large, is at least alpha of y, for every y that you find. So you can always, the graph has a infinite chromatic number, but at the same time, it can have very large independent sets, which is kind of contradictory, right? Because very large independent sets should kind of imply a small chromatic number, but we can do it. Any questions? Can you go back to the last uh, page real quick? I just want to read it again. Sure, no problem. What is okay? K graph, gotcha. Okay, yeah, yeah it's a K graph. We are doing this for any uniformity, any uniformity. Yeah. Okay, uh, okay, okay. So, okay. yeah, I don't know. I, 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 the moral of the story here, I think, that is the following, right? Uh, having large chromatic number should mean that you have small independent sets, but we are saying that we can have independent sets as large as k minus one over k. So somehow you can always, you can find a graph, you can decide, design a graph that has large chromatic number and at the same time large independent sets, which is, is nice, it's nice. Okay, I know I'm throwing a bunch of results, right? The final thing that I want to talk about, right, is about the clear configurations. It's another thing that we consider, right? So I will say that a configuration is a set of points in the Euclidean space. But here I will talk, um, I, I like to call this R infinity, right? But this R infinity, you should think as an embedding. I'm just embedding R, R square, R cube, and so on in each other, right? So this R infinity shouldn't be seen as something too fancy. It's just because my configurations can be infinite, right? And I don't want to have a bounded dimension for them, right? So that's. So I consider a configuration is just a set of points in the Euclidean space, right? That might have infinite dimension. Two configurations are isomorphic, right? If there is an isometry between them, it means exactly if there is a bijection that preserves norm, right? And we can talk about the similar concept of uh, being Ramsey, right? So. 
like we did for graphs and arithmetic progressions and so on, right? We can talk here uh, about uh, configurations of points. So I can say that a configuration Y arrows X with our colors, if no matter how you are color Y, you are going to find a monochromatic copy of X, right? Copy, doesn't need to, yeah, yeah, it's a copy, right? It's isometric to X, right? Uh, and this is an interesting field, right, of uh, combinatorics, right? Uh, it, it was initiated by Erdős, Graham, Montgomery, Rothschild, Spencer, and maybe Strauss, if I'm not mistaken. We can talk about how, what, when configurations can be Ramsey or not, right? And we define the X is Ramsey, right? If you can color for any number of colors, right? You can color the Euclidean space. And here, that's why I, I find convenient to say R infinity, right? But the, 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 the normal statement will say, ah, there exists a RD. If you give me a color R, there exists a RD that runs it, right? But here I'll say the R infinity arrows X with R color. I mean, if you color the uh, vertices of R infinity, you are going to obtain a monochromatic copy of X. And as an example, right, we can check the segments are around, say, right? So this shouldn't, so for instance, if you want to look two colors, an easy way to check that a segment is wrong says that you look at the plane, you choose three points, a triangle, right? And because we are coloring with two colors, well, maybe this is red, maybe this is blue, but now one of these colors has to be re uh, repeated, right? So maybe we repeat a, 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 a red, and then we obtain our segment of, we obtain our segment of size fixed, right? We say the size one. And for instance, if it was three colors, well, we just go one dimension higher, right? We just draw, and I'm not so good with drawing, but I try to draw, we draw a tetrahedra, right? With everybody of length one, right? And because we have three colors, well, we can have blue, red, and maybe green. But now we have to repeat a color in the other vertex, right? So maybe it's green, and then we'll obtain a segment as well. And you can do that for any dimension, right? So for any number of colors, right? You just put the dimension that you want there, right? And you get the simplex in that dimension, right? And this would work, right? The simplex that everybody has distance one. So segments are around, see, is a, that's an example. And important result, right, in the field is that if it is Ramsey, then it's spherical, which means it lives on a sphere, right? All the points actually are in a sphere of some finite dimension, right? Okay. Then, yeah, in the same paper, right, that this Erdős, Graham, Montgomery, and so on paper, they prove the bricks are Ramsey. Bricks are just a, a generalization of whatever is a, a segment, right? So maybe a rectangle is a brick, or a, a parallelepiped, right, is also a brick, a brick, right? And you can go in higher dimensions doing the same thing, right? So these are same examples of bricks. And of course, all of them lie in a sphere, right? A rectangle always lies in a sphere of dimension two, right? And a parallel people always lies in a sphere of dimension, a rectangle, yeah, in a sphere of dimension in, in R3, right? In R3. I hope that is clear. Uh, there is also another result by Krish, right? That says the regular polygons are Ramsey which means not only uh, bricks, right, that includes square, but if you have a pentagon, this is also 
in a circle, right? This is spherical as well, and it is uh, round shape. Okay. And the last result that I want to talk that gives some uh, some notion of uh, maybe we can do the same, right? Is that simplices are round shape. And by here, simplices, I mean not the regular simplices, right? But like, for instance, uh, uh, you can see our obtuse triangle, right? As a simplex, as a two dimensional simplex, right? It just means that if D plus one points in RD, that all of them are a finally independent. I hope that it makes sense. Okay. And they are Ramsey, but there is a funny, the way that is proven, right? Originally proven, at least, right? It's not by using a Ramsey statement, right? It's by using a stronger statement. It's by using a density statement. So this is a theorem by Franco and Rodo, right? That they said that for every S simplex, finite dimensional S, there exists a configuration Y, right? And for every S and a real number alpha, there exists a configuration Y that whenever you take an alpha proportion of Y, right? You are going to have a copy of S. So they actually, they prove a density statement, right? Okay. And because we know, and they prove a density statement for alpha being as small as you want. And because we already know, we already discussed that, right? If you have a density statement for alpha as small as you want, you have the Ramsey statement, right? You can prove the Ramsey statement from the density. So in particular, this theorem proves the simplices are Ramsey, right? The simplex is a Ramsey. But it kind of, for us, it left us curious, right? So if you can do density statements, right? If such, a, if such statements are possible to be done for configurations in the plane, right? Then it starts to make sense asking, ah, are density statements and Ramsey statements the same, right? We know that the answer is going to be no, so <laughs> I will save this time. So I will call X to be P Ramsey, right? And by P Ramsey, I mean, uh, it will be P Ramsey if it satisfies the Ramsey statement, right? If there exists a configuration Y that satisfies the Ramsey state statement and an alpha, right? Such that whenever I take Y pi, Y tilde finite, right? It's the same game, right? We take Y tilde finite from Y. There is a large set that doesn't have a copy of X. So it violates the density. We cannot take the density for that alpha. There is an alpha that you cannot take below the, the alpha. There is a large guy, right? So that will be... Uh, a violation of showing the Ramsey and density statements are not the same for that configuration. So we say that when the Ramsey and density statements are not the same, the configuration is called P Ramsey. Okay. And we were able to prove, we're still starting with that, right? But we were able to prove the simplices and bricks are P Ramsey in the sense that the, the Ramsey statement and density statement are not the same. And we can take alpha as big as one quarter, but that's not optimal. So might be one direction would be to know if we can take better than one quarter, but we are able to do for this configuration with one quarter. So yeah, that's the results that we had. I wanted to share, right? For, for this uh, for this result, is it possible? Is there? Do you know that it would be impossible to get rid of Y entirely and just replace it, say, with R infinity? Uh, that's also another question, right? Uh, it's not clear. This could be done. Uh, uh, um, I don't think so. I don't think so, because like I said, here in this result, uh, actually, I, I'm not going to claim that I know stuff. 
uh, wise constructed carefully. Yeah. So I will, I will believe it might, that. It might be a little bit surprising, yes. But yeah, it strange. might be a little bit surprising, but R is construct, uh, wise constructed carefully here. So yeah, I don't know. I, I would doubt, I would doubt, but I cannot say to you that no, I, I cannot give you a counterexample now. Thank you. Uh, okay. Uh, and then, yeah, that's all that I wanted to talk. I wanted to give a sketch of a proof, right? Like you can see, but I think that I only have one hour, right? And I... I didn't use my time <laughs> so well. <laughs> and it was a big sketch of a proof. But I can talk about uh, some open problems, right? And and finish, right? So one thing that we did for arithmetic progressions. What is arithmetic progression? Arithmetic progression is a system of a linear equation, right? And that, for instance, if you're looking at arithmetic progressions of length five, that's the system. That, that's what it means to be arithmetic progression of length five. Okay. And what is a pseudon set? It's the system, right? So in some sense, whatever was the statement that we did for system of linear equations, right? It's really for system of linear equations, right? Where we choose two specific systems, right? Okay. So the question is, can we do for other systems, right? And there is this concept uh, developed by Rado, right? That we say that a system of equation is partition regular, right? If whenever you color uh, the integers with our color, you have a monochromatic solution. For instance, sure, right? Prove this, right? The x plus y is equal to z is partition regular. Whenever you color the integers, you will find a sol monochromatic solution for that. Uh, so, yeah, maybe an interesting question is, can we do the same, right? Can we do this question that we did, right? Uh, we, you give to me a partition regular system, so a system that I can make a Ramsey statement, right? Otherwise, I, I, I cannot even start, right? And can I do, uh, I find a subset X that the Ramsey statement ho holds, so every R coloring of X contains monochromatic solution, but the density statement fails, right? I can find for every Y finite, there exists a Z large that has no solutions, right? And the second question that I can think, uh, I forgot to put a question mark. Uh, we did for bricks simplices, there are not many configurations that we know there is Ramsey, right? But the next step, right, would be uh, regular polygons, right? So our regular polygons satisfy this, that you can make a Ramsey statement, but it's not a density statement. You can have the Ramsey, but not density, right? So P Ramsey in this sense from PVA. And that's it. I think that I have all my time, right? I, I pretty much use the entire time, right? So I think that I will stop from here. Yeah, but I have. I thank you. <laughs>